All right, everyone, welcome. Um, call the meeting to order for the April 22nd uh, select board meeting for the town of Rockport. Um, we are, since we're working under the COVID-19 uh, situation, um, just a reminder to anybody who's watching that if you have any comments, um, please either submit them via live stream chat to uh, through the live stream or send an email to Bill Post at wpost at rockportmain.gov. And that's the only way we can actually do public participation during the course of the meeting. Um, but we welcome public participation. Um, the uh, first item on the agenda, we're all here, obviously. The first item on the agenda is the town manager's report. So Bill, you wanna go ahead? Sure, thanks, Deborah. So I just wanna start off by saying that um, depending on what happens tonight at the meeting, there may be some paperwork that the board members need to sign. So um, you'll just have to after the meeting, decide how you're going to do that. We can drop we can drop it on the table out front at the town office, and um, as long as three of you or the majority of you come in and sign that, I'd appreciate that. So um, we'll have to handle that as uh, as we go along. Um, so you do have some in my written report. You have um, that was a couple of weeks ago, I guess. I'll, I'll update that, but I'll also talk about those items. Uh, we did receive payments in lieu of taxes from the main Coast Heritage Trust uh, for the Beach Hill, uh, the Alderman Farm Beach Hill Connector and Erickson Field Properties of $5,600, uh, and from the Coastal Mountains Land Trust, the amount of $750 for the Beach Nut property on the Beach Hill Preserve, so those came in. Uh, the Fire Department received a $1,500 grant from Walmart for fire uh, smoke detectors so that they can provide those to uh, people that don't have them in, in the community. After writing the report, we also uh, were notified that the Camden Rotary awarded $5,000 to the, the fire department for the same purpose. So um, Chief Peasley had written that grant for both Camden and Rockport fire departments because it's fairly uh, the same program that we participate with, uh, Camden does as well. So both communities were awarded $5,000 from the Camden Rotary for that purpose, which is obviously a good thing. Um, I think it was, I want to say last month, we um, put out the heating oil out to bid when the prices started to plummet. Um, and that was before we knew it was going to go below $0. Uh, <laughs> but we did award that, or I awarded that bid to the low bidder, which was Dead River Company, for $1.55.78 per gallon which is a pretty good price for us. Um, the current year that we're paying is $2.31 and 316. So that's gonna save us some money in the next uh, budget year, which is a good thing. Some more good news, the May Municipal Association uh, awarded us an intern grant. So the summer intern that we have uh, lined up to begin hopefully end of May, the beginning of June, um, uh, Rockport was awarded a $2,000 grant for the intern. So that pays for probably a third of the of the uh, intern. So that certainly is good news as well. Um, Central Maine Power, the streetlight refund, you recall at an earlier meeting that I had said that they were gonna be issuing a refund and we thought it was gonna be around $4,000 for those streetlights that they did not uh, repair um, over the past several months, years. Um, the actual refund amount came out to $7,089.92. So that's as a credit on our bill. So that certainly is excellent news. Um, saving us some more money in this fiscal year off our streetlight costs. Um, I did wanna also say that um, the Rotary Club efforts, um, this was really spearheaded by Richard Anderson and, and others um, between Camden and Rockport and other communities um, about what the Rotary Rotarians could do uh, during this pandemic time. and. What basically grew out of that is a, is a website called rotarianserving.org. Um, and I would encourage everybody to take a look at that. It's, it's basically a clearinghouse website that allows people to, that need help can go to that website and, and ask for help for various items, whatever it is that they need for help, whether it's food or transportation or somebody to go grocery shopping for them or, or whatever it is. Um, and it also allows people to provide donations 
um, and also to uh, offer their assistance. So there's it's, it's a pretty good uh, website that was created. Um, there's a link to it on our uh, on the town's website. I believe Camden also Camden uh, Audra Caleb Bell, the Camden manager, was involved with getting this set up, um, and it's through um, Rotary clubs in Belfast, Camden, Rockport, uh, Belfast, Camden, Rockland, and Unity. So it's pretty wide ranging, um, and I've heard good success stories so far from it. So that's a good thing. Um, revenue collections. Um, when I wrote this again on April eighth. The March uh, excise tax collections were down only about 10%, which is not bad, it's about $6,700 for March. So that's not a bad, uh, not a bad problem at all. Um, in April so far, we've only collected about $12,500 to date. And normally we would collect around $76,000 for April. Um, so we're obviously not at the end of the month yet, um, but that obviously is a concern. And one of the things we talked about during the budget meetings about revenue was that that may be, it's more likely to be an issue in this fiscal year than it is in next fiscal year when it comes to excise tax collections, because eventually people will have to register their cars. Most likely that'll end up happening in the next fiscal year after July 1st, once this um, is either over or loosened. Um, tax if, collection, yep. If I, might, if, I, if I might, Bill, the, I mean, the governor gave 30 days after uh, the pandemic uh, emergency situation was terminated. Correct. So probably when that happens, within that 30-day period, we'll see an extreme spike because right. people will be coming. So it should be in, in this uh, coming year, we'll have a boost perhaps. I don't know how you'll put it in the books, but. Yeah, no, that's that's right. And I had talked with the town clerk earlier today about this topic, and she's concerned about collections in the next fiscal year, which I can understand because people may not be ready to buy new vehicles, but at the same point with the deals that are out there that they're offering now at 0% for 84 months and even having deferred payments for three or four months, I think people are going to be purchasing once we get on the other side of this. It might not be until August, September, October, um, but I think that'll happen, but we will most likely see a spike, as Mark had said, um, with excise tax collections, possibly in July or August, from what's not collected in April, May, possibly June. Uh, it all depends on when when things are loosened. Um, for tax collections, um, as you know, taxes were due on April 15th, and um, not including today, we were at about 71% collected of the normal collections for the month of April. Now, obviously, we still have um, another week or so uh, in this in this month, um, and there were some more tax payments that came in today. And actually, um, before those were processed, there was uh, the town clerk processed about $137,000 today in tax collections. So that number is uh, is already outdated to 71%. Um, so I'm cautiously optimistic that we're still doing okay there. I, I do expect us to not obviously reach the level that we usually would reach for collections in April, but I think that we'll, I think we're gonna do okay there and our cash flow is fine at this point. Um, some other good news to update the board on and the public, uh, the, the lights for the LED street light project have begun arriving at Public Works. Um, so those are, are slowly coming in and being delivered. Um, I expect installation hopefully in May, mid-May to the end of May to start. Um, it all depends on when the smart controls uh, are delivered. So there's been a little bit of a delay in those from my understanding, but um, other towns are, are starting to see delivery dates coming up for those uh, end of April. So that we should be on track to have installation in May for the, uh, for the LED street lights. So that's definitely a good thing too. Um, one last bit of good news. Uh, today we were notified from Maine Municipal Association that we also received or was were awarded a safety grant. Um, credit goes to Diane Hamilton, my executive assistant, who writes these for, for the uh, various departments. Um, we were awarded $1,447 for the purchase of safety equipment in the fire department. So, um, at least we're getting revenue from different sources other than just taxes. 
And I think that's all I have. Does anybody have any questions? Doug? Um, Bill, do you know um, when they're gonna open up Bosecam Point Road? Uh, typically we open it on April 15th and I didn't know if just because of the storm public works were late getting to that or has there been a change in the plan? It, no, it's just that they've been late. We've the cleanup from that last storm last Monday has just taken us a little bit longer with um, with the various uh, brush and, and uh, that sort of thing. So they should be getting to it um, pretty quickly, I would think. And actually, I do have one other couple of other things I wanted to talk about. Um, had to flip over my paper so I could read my notes. Um, we did receive the a resignation from the planning board today from, and I'm going to butcher his name, I know, Lou, and I don't even want to try his last name, one, maybe one of you can, um, but anyway, he has resigned and he's moving back to Ohio, so um, we'd certainly thank him and that'll be a fit on your agenda, on the next agenda for official acceptance, um, that's effective April 30th. One last thing also to update the board and the community on too, um, as everyone knows, the governor's order She's had several orders that have come out, of course. One of them uh, had to do with lodging and short-term rentals um, and um, only having those open for uh, essential workers or visiting nurses, doctors, that, that type of thing. So the police department has sent out a letter as well as a copy of the order to um, 37 separate listings that they researched and found online um, that, were, that were active uh, for the month of, of April um, and onward into the, into the month of May. Um, and so there's been some, from those notices and letters that went out, it was sent out more as an informational piece just to remind those owners of short-term rentals or uh, of the inns and uh, motels that uh, they need to abide by that order. Um, and there's been some conversations started between those owners and the police chief, you know, they responded to that mailing um, with either questions or saying, yes, we are aware of the order and we're not keep taking reservations or we're trying to figure out how to, you know, sh block calendars or whatnot. Um, and the chief also had a conversation with, um, I think it's the innkeepers association or what I don't know what their official title is, but the executive director of the, um, of the association um, about uh, rentals for hotels, motels, um, and they're fully aware of what's you know what the order is, and they're working with all their members to make sure that they're only doing what they need to be doing. Um, um, and the, I'm yeah. sorry, Bill, on that, just out of curiosity, do you know what the thinking? I mean, I certainly know what uh, understand the thinking of not allowing rentals now. But um, do you know what the thinking is and not taking reservations? Like if they're taking reservations for August or September or whatever, or do, do you know? I mean, I know th what the governor's order said. but Yeah, I don't know what the thinking is behind that, honestly. Um, I mean, you would think that they would have said, you know, no reservations during any time that this is going on, but right. uh, as opposed to no reservations across the board. So I didn't. I don't know if you'd heard anything about that. Okay. I think that I think that my my gut reaction to that is that because we it's an unknown as to when we're going to be ending um, and allowing yeah, sure. activities to come back to somewhat normal, then it makes yeah. sense to say nobody can reserve at yeah. all. Well, certain yeah, certainly any reservations would have to be subject to you know further restrictions and caveats and stuff. But sure. Anyway. Okay. And then also on that on that side as well, the code officer is obviously investigating any of those that we've um, that we've uncovered that may have potential permit issues or code violations or whatnot, and he'll be following up with those on an individual basis um, because there are some that appeared to be um, not up to code or didn't have certain permits in place uh, or the like. So he'll be following up with those as we move forward. And um, I have to give credit to the police department. Um, for, for researching these and really finding the owners with because we mailed they mailed out the letters to the owners so they did a good job in tracking down and we've got that list now and um, we'll continue to grow that list as we work through this situation and there will be follow up of course um, as we as we continue through this issue. 
That's great to have the database now that we're developing as we move into considering how to regulate short-term rent. Yes. Exactly. Doug. Uh, Bill, just to follow up on the LED street lights, I know it's kind of a broken record on this, but do you have any update on the bridge uh, possibility of having lights? I know Mike was kind of waiting to hear back from the state, but uh, is, is that sort of, should we just close the issue or do you still have some hope? No, I still have some hope. I'm actually going to be talking to the installer for the LED streetlight project to see what what they recommend and if they've got a different type of option that we can uh, pursue. So um, I'm not giving up on it. It's still still a project that I'm well aware of and want to make sure that we do get that bridge lit up because it is dark. So okay. not losing sight of it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Jacob, we don't have anything from the audience. Um, okay, so this is the time for public input on non-agenda items. So again, if we don't have any items or any uh, chats that have come in from the audience or any emails, Bill. And there, are, there are no emails and no chat comments. We'll move on to amendments to the agenda. Um, does anybody have any suggested amendments, Bill? Yeah, I just want to say that on the um, on the listing of meeting minutes, it's just the workshop minutes. It's not the regular meeting minutes. We did them two separately because the workshop was actually motions uh, for the budget, if you remember. So we did do minutes for the workshop, um, but we don't have the regular meeting minutes done yet. On the 23rd for the 23rd. The, for the 23rd of March, yes. Yep. Yeah, we're on the consent agenda on the first day of the month. We already got that one taken care of. Sorry, Jeff. On the agenda, uh, under consent agenda, we have a quick claim deed, but didn't we already get that one covered last week? Yeah, we did that last week with three signatures that we were going to um, we were going to uh, uh, confirm it. Tonight. Yeah, just yeah, it would be good just to have a, you know the formal formal vote on it. So again, just for anybody listening, there was a um, a quick claim deed that uh, <clears throat> needed to get done for um, taxes that had been paid and, and um, well, you could fill us in on, if you, if you wanna fill in any detail bill, but the quick claim deed needed to be done in terms of um, by a date certain, by last Friday, as I recall, um, for a closing. So we went ahead and had three board members sign the quick claim deed in time for that closing to take place with the um, understanding that uh, we all know we're in agreement with it and would reaffirm that tonight yep okay any uh, any amendments other amendments okay so the next item on the consent agenda is um or is, is the consent agenda rather and that is the <clears throat> affirmation as i said of the quick claim deed the meeting minutes for march 9th and april 6th and the workshop meeting minutes for march 23rd Yeah, I have some edits on the March 23rd uh, meeting notes. Okay, go ahead. You like those now, or do you want to go through the quick claim deed? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, why don't we just take, then let's just take the uh, March 23rd off of the consent agenda. And so the consent agenda will, uh, unless we hear other um, issues, we'll just have a a uh, motion on the consent agenda and we'll take the March 23rd minutes separately. So let's do the consent agenda first. Doug. I move the board. Oh. Uh, I, I, Doug first, go ahead, Doug. Uh, I move that the board approve the consent uh, agenda uh, as amended withholding the March 23rd meeting. Mark. Mark. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bill, can we do this just by raising hands since we can see hands, or do we have to do a roll call? You need to have you need to have a roll call. Okay. Doug. Aye. Jeff. Aye. Denise. Aye. Mark. Aye. And I vote aye. 
Okay, so um, next let's have Jeff's comment on the March 23rd workshop minutes, please. Certainly, uh, under on March 23rd meeting, Monday, March 23rd, under the select board meetings workshop, uh, section two, fourth paragraph down, I'd like to reword that and I will get the wording back to the uh, town office. But I'd like to have it say board member Hamilton stated that he recommends retaining the savings uh, and not drawing from the unassigned fund balance. I believe it says retaining the savings of $15,000 and not drawing from the unassigned fund balance period. So okay. the restatement of that to make it clearer. Okay, Any uh, anything else on those minutes? Yeah, second page. Oh. way down through. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth paragraph down, board member Hamilton. Uh, I'd like to change the wording to say offered that to reduce expenses at this point in time. And then the second statement, uh, he stated that we should be overly frugal at this time. Uh, just again, clarification, I will get those to the town office. Anything else, Jeff? No, nope. nobody else? Okay, with that, does somebody want to make a motion? I move that we approve the uh, budget workshop minutes for March 23rd. As amended. Second. Just Mark seconded. Okay, uh, vote, uh, Doug? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Denise? Aye. Mark? Aye. And I vote yes. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is act on award of Walker uh, Park seawall reconstruction. Bill? Yes, so in the board's packet, um, this went out to bid and we received five bids for the Walker Park seawall reconstruction. There were three, basically three ways that it was bid. Um, number one is if it was uh, constructed in conjunction with the neighboring property in the uh, winter spring of 2020. Number two, if it was constructed independently of the neighboring properties project in the winter spring of 2020. And number three, if it was constructed independently of the neighborhood neighboring properties project in the fall of 2020 or winter of 2021. Um, and you have the bid tabulation in your materials as well. Uh, for budgeting reasons, because we didn't have this money budgeted for this project in this fiscal year's budget, so my really the options were, were limited to um, ex uh, at looking at uh, having construction for the town's portion of this in the fall of this year um, or winter this year, winter next year. Um, the recommendation uh, is to go with, uh, to award it to LG Whitcomb Landscaping LLC for the price of $39,000, um, which includes the reconstruction of the granite steps also um, at that at that location, um, and also moving them so that they're in a better location to make it safer for people to uh, utilize those and that they don't get um, as beat up from the wave action and tides that are coming in to the harbor. Uh, if there's any questions or comments, no. Nope. Nope. Okay. And uh, somebody want to make a motion? Yeah, I'm looking for the form of a motion here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and make the motion. I motion that the town of Rockport award the bid for the Walker Park shoreline stabilization project uh, to be completed as per that described in the proposal for the amount of $39,000.00 to LG Whitcomb Landscaping LLC. Second. Okay, all those in favor, uh, Doug? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Denise? Aye. Mark? Aye. Aye. Okay. All in favor. Next item uh, 
is act on the taxation of timeshares ordinance. This is with respect to the Samoset timeshare ordinances. So um, well, that's how it came up. Bill, you want to explain it? Yeah, I'll open it. Um, and then Terry can certainly um, weigh in with his comments as well. So this was brought up uh, to a previous town manager that just didn't, didn't move forward. But essentially this ordinance um, allows the, instead of the town processing tax bills for each of the timeshares, which there are about 3,600 of them uh, at, through the Samoset, that it would have the Samoset assess those taxes, if you will, and collect those taxes and then submit them to the, to the municipality through a, um, a, a bank account. Um, we still will have work in assessing the value and uh, names and address changes when ownerships change and, and, that, and the like, but this should save Obviously, it's going to save printing 3,600 tax bills each year, and it will also save postage for those tax bills. Um, and it should save some time in the tax collector's office, too, when it comes to um, either tax liens or notices um, that have to be sent out to the uh, tax collector's office. And, and there's many of these that are very small amount as well. Um, previously, when this was um, brought up way before my time and before Carrie's time as well, uh, with the Samoset, it was seen as burdensome for the Samoset. Um, but with technological advances, uh, Carrie and I brought this up to uh, Bonnie Russell, who's the GM at the Samoset, and he saw no issue at all uh, implementing this from their perspective. So, Carrie, I don't know if you want to weigh in. No, you, you, you've covered it very well. I mean, it's it's uh, um, just a good relationship between us and the Samoset. Um, It'll relieve some burden for us. It won't cause a burden for the Samoset. We're still responsible for assessing the timeshares. Uh, and what I envision is that we will, uh, I will send them over an Excel file every year uh, with the assessed values, and they will just add that to their uh, annual maintenance bill that they send to everybody. It's uh, pretty simple, and uh, the way we see it, and Connie agreed with us, um, seems like a good thing to do. Some of those bills, just to give you an idea, the the, um, the lowest value Samoset uh, um, timeshare, I have valued at seven hundred dollars, and we we take in for that taxes of eleven dollars and ninety four cents. The most expensive timeshare is sixteen thousand two hundred, uh, of which we get two seventy six in tax revenue. But it all adds up. I mean, thirty six hundred units adds up to a combined value of eleven million dollars plus, uh, you know, some. And the revenues from that is 191,000. So it's it's real money, um, and there just seems to be a good cooperative agreement that will take care of issues for both of us. Jeff. Jeff. Uh, how many total tax bills do we issue in a year's time? 6,200. All right. So we have eliminated more than half of our number of tax bills issued, postage, effort, printing. I mean, right. that's just excellent. Yeah. Doug, was your hand up? Are you? No. no, but I will say that I'm I'm really glad that uh, Carrie was on top of this uh, uh, second Jeff's phrase for looking into this. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I also want to say that um, while we were doing the research for this, and I ran this by the town's attorney as well, um, that this is one of those ordinances in the statute that that the board is allowed to approve without having it having to go to town meeting vote. So I was going to ask about that. So yep, yeah, okay. yeah. And when I found that clause in the in the statute, I brought that up to Phil, and and he um, firmly agreed with what what I had read in it. And I you know I give credit to to uh, Carrie's office for drafting the ordinance based on some of those other communities that had already implemented this or some that had drafted it and not necessarily implemented it, but um, we certainly didn't reinvent the wheel. So. Mm -hmm. And that's why the signature lines are on the are on the document. Board. This is, if approved, this is one that we'll put in a folder and put on the table so that board members can come in and sign. Right. I move the board approve the taxation of timeshare ordinance as presented. Second. Second. I think Jeff beat you on the second. Okay, um, uh, Doug? Aye. Denise? 
Aye. Jeff? Aye. Mark? Aye. And I vote aye. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Gary. Gary, that's nicely done. I mean, that's that eliminates an incredible amount of wasted, I won't say wasted effort, but certainly inefficient activity that uh, is, is just mind boggling. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Your efficient government and government staff at work, right? <laughs> Trying. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Gary. Good night. <laughs> All right, so the next item, bye. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, the um, act on creation of an appointments to Camden Rockport Broadband Task Force. Uh, you might recall that we have what's always been referred to as an ad hoc technology committee with John Vehman as the chair, Joe Stranowski and myself um, as members. This goes back a few years ago. Um, there were some other members on the task force, but those um, folks were really more interested in um, in the uh, um, amending or improving the town website, which you know Bill is working on now. And um, so that's really not an item for the task force to be doing. The ones that I mentioned, um, John, Joe, and myself, are the ones that were always very focused on the on the broadband issue. Um, as you know, we've had this uh, ad hoc group from Camden and Rockport that's been meeting now for a number of months. Plus John and I um, have had meetings over the last year or so with a number of different um, people to advance, you know, advance our knowledge and so forth of, of um, different options behind the scenes. And of course we've done all these articles. So the recommendation is to disband the ad hoc technology committee um, and to, um, Appoint three members, specifically, uh, specifically John Vehman, Joe Stranowski, and myself, to this um, to this new task force, which um, we were calling the Camden Rockport Broadband Task Force. So it's basically making more official the ad hoc group that has been doing the work on the articles and all, all of that. Um, I did get a report from Bob Falciani today that. Um, the Camden board has approved the creation of that task force from their end and the appointment of um, two individuals, Mark Ratner and Jeremy Martin, and they're going to appoint a third one. Deborah, I'll move that the board disband the current Rockport Technology Committee and with the town of Camden uh, create the Camden Rockport Broadband Task Force, appointing Deborah Hall, John Beeman, and Joe Stranowski to that task force as representing Rockport. Second. <laughs> Second it is. Okay. Is there any discussion? Sorry, I've been failing to ask no. that, but I'm trying to see everybody's faces. So, no. Okay. Um, Doug? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Denise? Aye. Mark? Aye. And I. Okay. Um, great. Thank you. All right. Um, the, the, uh, the remaining item, except for liaison reports, uh, or uh, the next item, I should say, um, is uh, announcement of future meetings. And we have here um, on our agenda. May 11th, 2020, as the next regular select board meeting. Um, you may recall that we were supposed to have one next month. Well, I mean, next Monday would have been the fourth of the of the month, but given that we're doing this tonight, we figure that we don't have a need to do one next Monday, making that May 11th, unless something comes up in the interim that you know requires us to meet earlier. And I would assume that we will be doing it via Zoom um, at that point, I mean, obviously we can assess it as time goes on, but I would imagine it would be via Zoom. So we did, we did receive one comment. <clears throat> okay. And that was to ask Mark to mute his iPhone when he's not speaking because there's some background information. Some background okay. noise. The clock ringing, sorry. That's okay. Okay. Deborah. Uh, yes, Jeff. Uh, just one quick 
process check, are we able to move that meeting to the uh, second Monday? Um, Board meeting. May 11th. Yeah. Um, so the May 11th, so that would be, what, what would the date be? Is that the 11th? The next one? Yeah, yeah the 11th is the second Monday. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and you have a problem with that one, Jeff? No, I don't. Oh. No, I don't. I just want to make sure that we're uh, okay from a uh, charter standpoint to be able to move it a week. Correct? Isn't that when they are anyway? That's the regular meeting. Yeah, that's, all right. My all right. apologies. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Okay. That's it's right. all blurred into one big long day. That just I know it. every day and every week seems to be blurred together now. I think. Uh, <laughs> I no, when you when you mentioned that we moved it, I somehow got my wires crossed, thinking that our normally scheduled one was next week. Okay, sorry. Um, so um, on the select board um, liaison reports, I know that there is um, there are a couple of um, items that Denise wants to bring up for um, library. So why don't we uh, start with Denise? Okay. Um, you know, as you know, the town um, has been able to use the services of a designer who specializes in library design, furnishings, um, interior work. Uh, and her costs have all been donated uh, through the Rockport Library Foundation. She's now worked with the Library Building Committee on the main, you know, on the main library level, um, and the Building Committee has unanimously approved her overall furnishing plan for furniture, uh, including the bookshelves, which is really a key part of what, what she selected for that area, um, as well as some tables and chairs furnishings on the first uh, floor. The estimate to completely furnish the upper level of the library, the main floor, exceeded the amount of money that the Rockport Library Foundation has available for furnishings. They um, have a loan from the library built from the library committee of a hundred thousand, um, and then some, you know, a couple other, a couple chairs have also been donated to cost. Um, so the foundation made the decision in light of the uncertain fundraising environment we're in to not commit us to any more money than what we already have in our account. So the town will be um, ordering furnishings of $102,000 is essentially what it comes to that we can afford and the foundation can guarantee to the town that it can reimburse it for that amount. Um, that's less than what the designer would like um, to see on that first level, but we made the decision that in sort of this, it's, it's just not the time to ask people to donate money for nice furnishings. Um, we've got, it'll be very serviceable. The library has other things, you know, Ben has other tables and chairs and things he can bring in. So it's not gonna feel empty at all. Um, but that's sort of the decision that uh, was made between the foundation and, you know, sort of a proxy for the library building committee for that first floor. Those, those furniture, that furniture really does, the, the lion's part, 80,000 of it is for the bookshelves and that needs to be ordered um, pretty much right away in order to ensure that that'll all be here by September, um, which is still sort of, I guess, in our, in our sights as to the library construction, completion of construction date. Um, so the, the town would go ahead and order that um, the foundation has entered into an agreement where it commits um, to reimburse the town for all of that money. And, um, and Bill Post, you know, would sort of make place the order on behalf of the town. Um, the other piece of that is the lower level library furniture. Um, and, and interrupt me if you have questions, but the designer um, has well, let me go back to that upper level. There's about $20,000 more in furniture that the library designer believes is essential or would really make the library feel finished. And we've just said we're, you know, maybe through the course of the summer, we'll be able to raise some more money and be able to fill that in. But right now we're just doing the bookshelves and then this additional 20,000 in, in tables and chairs and other furniture. So the total to do uh, the upper completely, what Nadine would like to have happen would be around 120,000. 
Well, so that's interesting. Now, total is more like 150,000. We went with 102,000, and she said really another 20 above the 102 is what I think is sort of essential or minimum of what I need. And, you know, we've got some time. You know, we'll let's get the bookshelves. In. Our view, anyway, um, is we're going to just go ahead, get what we what we have money for right now, continue doing some fundraising, maybe early summer, mid summer, and see if we can raise that additional twenty thousand to get her the last piece of what she'd like to see there. But that's you know, and we've had some various um, people who've been involved in the fundraising say, yeah, I'll be. You know, we get seven people, each of them do three thousand dollars. We could make this happen. But that's sort of on its own track. Right now, we're going to go forward on the 102000 for which we have money in the bank um, to spend. So, um, lower level furniture, um, what, all the furnishings for the lower level are um, have been selected by the library designer and approved by the, the town, the librarian. Um, they're they're going to work. They they look great. We've got some really generous donors who are going to just pay for all of that. Um, those furnishings, the donor, the designer will just order those directly, and um, and the town won't be in the contractual loop with that. The town doesn't have to place an order, put itself at any financial risk. The designer will order it. It'll get paid for, and then those will just be in the lower level. But Ben and um, others have reviewed what the library, the town's library designer selected. So there's town input on it. It's not like somebody's just stepping in and taking over our library. The town's reviewed it, um, but the town doesn't have to pay for it. And I think um, Denise and I had talked about this and I just thought that it made sense to put this on, uh, have Denise talk about this with the board because, um, you know, we had said more or less decided we didn't we didn't disband the library building committee um, at one of our last meetings, but we we more or less decided that their work was more or less done unless something unforeseen came up. And so we um, we didn't, you know, I don't think anybody felt that it was necessary to bring them together, especially in this kind of environment, just to, you know, review those uh, items of furniture for the lower level, considering that they had really blessed uh, what Nadine had done in the past unanimously. And some of the folks that are involved, um, that have been involved in this are all in favor of it, as Denise said. So as long as the board's not uncomfortable with that. Okay, I think that's, that's a sign that we're not uncomfortable, Denise. Okay, <laughs> good news is good news. Yeah, well, that's great. So those orders will be, I think, be in place this week. and. Right. And just right. one point there too um, is yeah. that at the when we get to the end of the library project or near the end of the library project, um, there'll be a list of items that have been donated to the library, whether it's um, you know custom built bookshelves or custom doors or or whatnot, or the furnishings that are being purchased by the donor and, and donated to the town to the to the library. There'll be a whole list of those types of things that will go to the board for formal acceptance uh, as donated items to make sure that that's formally done. Um, some of those donors, you know, care to be anonymous and others may not. They may want to be listed as donating certain items. So we'll have a, we'll be keeping track of all of those uh, that are that are happening and, and then have that as a formal uh, adoption by the board or acceptance by the board later on this fall. Great. And so we're on the, um, while we're on the library, um, I know not everybody gets um, Rick's reports and so forth. And so um, can, can Bill or Doug or Denise, somebody just comment on generally where we are in terms of um, on track with timing and so forth with the library? Yeah, I can, I can weigh in on that. So we are definitely on track. Um, they've, if you've been by the project, you'll notice that there are windows that have been installed and have been going up or in, I should say. Um, uh, the doors, I believe, are arriving this week or early next week, so that those will be on site. The brickwork has started on the uh, back side of the building um, and is working its way around the building, I believe, clockwise. Uh, so it'll be on the side of the Young's property next. Um, 
of most of the sheetrock on the interior of the building has, I'd say probably 75% of it is up, if not more. The sprinkler system installation is um, well underway. Uh, the intersection work, Farley is back on site uh, this week and they're working on the intersection. Um, we have hit ledge a couple of times that we've had to have sort of some small change orders for that, um, but that's not unexpected in a project like this. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, it's pretty much on, it's on task, it's on point, um, and we're, we're on schedule for, for construction and completion as to when Fi had originally uh, talked about that. Um, they're doing, they're practicing social distancing, they're wearing masks, um, um, they're, Asking any visitor, of course, anybody that comes to the site must be with a mask. Um, those that aren't directly related to the project, uh, such as the architect or the owner or the owner's reps, um, are asked to check in with the uh, general contractor um, to schedule a time and so that they're well aware of uh, who's on, on the project and who's there visiting. Um, so those, are, those have been cut down dramatically, um, those types of uh, people that are just wandering by looking and seeing if they can come in and take a look. So that's been cut down. Um, so I think it's, I think it's going very well and they're taking uh, obviously the, the social distancing measures very seriously. Uh, and I think it's going well. Great. Imagine hitting ledge in Rockport. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else on, on that, on the library? Uh, okay, somebody want to go next on any liaison reports? Not that there's that much going on. I don't, uh, <clears throat> none of mine, uh, Deborah, uh, have met, but I do have a question with, uh, you know, we're going to be pretty tight up against it with revenue coming in, whether it's property taxes people are holding off on or can't pay, uh, whether it's excise taxes that people will take advantage of the you know, the 30 day after thing. So potentially, I mean, we, we have a pretty good chunk of change that will not be coming in in this fiscal year. And I'm wondering what uh, measures or if there are measures in place that Bill has done to um, try to keep things on the up and up or, or a level playing field with that. Yeah, all, all department heads are under a directive to only spend for what is essential. Um, and that's been in place um, for a while. I, it's been more formally uh, presented to them, but as I've spoken with department heads over the last two or three weeks, that's been known from them that I don't expect anything other than essential um, expenses being incurred. So I guess what I'm wondering is if 50% if of of uh, April, May, and June's revenue doesn't come in from excise tax. What does that do? I mean, is there something, you know, I know we're allowed to overspend, but yet this is a different cat. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, you know, in my head, whether, what do we do if we end up with a $100,000 shortfall come June 30th? Well, I'm, I'm looking at that currently with Megan to see where we are projecting for both revenues. Revenues are very difficult to project for excise tax, especially. Um, we are trying to take a look at that, but what we're trying to do is limit the expenses so that if we come up $100,000 short, that maybe we've underspent the accounts by $100,000 so that it's a wash. Um, generally, if you, un if you under collect your revenues and you um, spend, your, uh, spend your, your operating budgets uh, up to the max, if you will, you spend them 100%, then the difference is made up from uh, undesignated fund balance. That's where, it, that's where it comes from. That's how it balances out when you get to the audit point. Um, but ideally, what we want to try to do is uh, try to project what we might be under collected and then keep expenses down so that it washes out so that we don't have any impact on the undesignated fund balance. So I, my other last bit of curiosity, so I don't bore everybody to tears. If people come in after July 1st, when this is all done, uh, hopefully, and they pay their excise tax for their automobiles in you know, March, April, May, and June, is there a way that that monies can be uh, reflected in the 1920 budget? Or does it have to go into the next year's budget 
because it was taken in. It's taken in in next year's budget come July 1st, even though it was meant to be taken in in the year that we're in now. Does that make yeah. any sense? Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're what you're saying. So it would have to be counted in the next fiscal year. So it would have to be counted in FY21, but that would be so. It's it's basically what you're looking at is accounting issues. So it would be counted as a revenue in FY21, and we would be short in FY20 for excise tax, for instance. But then, come the end of FY21, we'd be back to normal, if you will, when it comes to the accounting. So if we did if we under collected in FY20 for excise taxes by $100,000 or whatever the number is, as I said, that's gonna look to our undesignated fund balance like um, like we're reducing that by 100,000. And then we'll, co we'll over collect in FY21 and then that'll go back to unassigned fund balance. So it will wash itself out eventually on, on the books. Okay, yeah, my last little tidbit is, I don't know how everybody else feels, but the next time we get together, if there's any type of projection that uh, you and Megan can come up with as to where you where we are and where you think we might be, yeah. you know, kind of end of June, that would be nice. I, there again, that's just me. So, no, I'm I'm already working on it, Mark. We're already we're already looking at that. So as soon as I have more information, we'll share it. That's why I wanted to give you an update on the revenues tonight, for example. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jeff. You had your hand up. Yeah, there's no update on any of my committees uh, since our last meeting. Doug, do you have anything? Actually, I do. Um, Finance committee and library committees have not met. Planning board, um, as Bill noted, Lou has resigned. Lou, as we all call him, uh, has resigned. So uh, we'll be looking to get a replacement there. And they're also trying to set up a uh, site visit to that solar farm out on Route 17. Um, and Joe has been working with um, people at the town office so they can start setting up Zoom meetings. Um, the Parks Committee, the one thing the Parks Committee did do uh, was that uh, four sugar maples had been purchased um, from the money that was given as a donation. Um, and so those are on site at the nursery and the nursery is gonna just take care of them until we're ready for those at the park. Um, we have also sold one of our benches and the donor says they'll have the money to us uh, before June 30th so that can be booked uh, in this year's revenue. Um, and between uh, that money and the money left over, uh, we should be able to order another bench, possibly two. I'll have to go over the numbers more closely. So that's encouraging. Um, now, that's it for official parks committee meeting. I can tell you that there has been a group of individuals um, who have been doing some <clears throat> Zoom meetings and emails. <clears throat> um, and we've intentionally not included any uh, town employees or anything like that. So it's not officially a meeting, um, but we've been arranging uh, some cleanup projects around town. Um, you know, I'll just go over some of those very quickly. Uh, one that uh, short fence next to the library there near the union house has been stained white. So it matches the one over by the opera house and it looks quite nice. Uh, an individual cleaned up uh, around the kilns and the kilns look so much better. Uh, the vines were pulled down. Uh, a lot of the debris was cleaned up, so it looks good. Uh, the um, sign out at Route 1 and 90 uh, that was just put in last year had some areas that needed paint and uh, a volunteer uh, cut a, a new trim board for that. And so it actually looks much better. Uh, some volunteers have also done a light uh, 
cleanup down at uh, Goodridge Park has got rid of some of the weeds and twigs and stuff that were there. Um, so things are still happening, uh, trying to keep the town uh, looking good. Bill, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to um, <clears throat> give you an update, Doug, and for those that are also uh, as far as the, for the planning board. So um, the chair of the planning board, Joe Sternowski, and I and Bill Napower and uh, Mandy Mariner Everett had a, a conference call discussion this afternoon about how we're moving forward with planning board meetings and, and the like. So um, we've got a tentative schedule that we're just waiting um, to hear back from uh, planning board members as to whether they're available or not and what their technology capabilities are for the Zoom meetings and the like. And we've also gotten some guidance from uh, Phil Saucier, the town's attorney, about uh, site walks. And he discourages <clears throat> site walks completely. Um, other than potentially doing a video of the areas and then playing that in a Zoom meeting later on with the developer um, so that then they can answer questions based on that video. So that's probably what we'll end up doing there. Um, and uh, there's also the issue with if we thought about potentially live streaming that site walk um, through Zoom. Uh, the issue with that is the bandwidth from a, from a cell phone um, if you will, just probably wouldn't work very well. So, um, but we are um, we are moving forward with a schedule of potential meeting dates um, based on the uh, work that the planning board has to do. So that should come out probably early next week, I think, with a list once we hear back from the board members um, availability and technology capabilities. Thanks to all the volunteers who are um, keeping uh, the town looking good. And uh, anything else anybody has to report? All right. Well, thanks, you guys. I think the Zoom, um, the Zoom technology has been working out uh, pretty well here, keeping us going. Jeff Parker, thanks for all your technology wizardry. Uh, Jeff. Yeah, I motion that we adjourn. Second. Great. Second. Okay. I'm going to not take a roll call on this, and I think that we're all in favor, right? Everybody. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Thanks, guys.